Hi there, Clinton from Core Electronics here. Um, welcome to our MicroPython for Microbit workshop. Over the course of the next couple of videos, we're going to have a look at how to use the MicroPython programming language to program and interface with the world using the Microbit. I've got a couple of examples of what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be looking at digital inputs where we can turn things on and back off again, analog inputs like this where we can change analog inputs and outputs where we can change the change things based on a linear scale. We're going to look at interacting with the world using sensors. So this one where I can have this virtual cup and also broadcasting uh, through Wi-Fi. So this little circuit here that lets me send messages from one board to the other. So what we're going to need over the course of the next couple of videos is obviously firstly, we're going to need a micro bit. We need a USB cable to also connect it to our computer. We're going to need to build our actual electrical circuits is a couple of alligator clips. Um, we have two 330 ohm resistors, an LED and a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. Um, we will also need to have Python 3 installed on our computer, as well as the Mu editor, which is a micro Python editor or a Python editor for um, designed to use with a couple different boards. The micro Python being one of them, another one being the Circuit Playground Express. So let's now have a look at kind of what micro Python is and what we can do with it. So you might be wondering what is micro Python? So MicroPython is a modification of the Python programming language um, that is designed to run on microcontrollers. So boards like the Microbit or the Arduino Uno, if you've um, heard of that. Um, one of the most uh, obvious advantages of using MicroPython is that it enables uh, really easy code to be written um, on microcontrollers. Like, Previously, Arduino was probably the easiest system to use, and the C language that it uses is a lot less forgiving than the Python language these use. This does kind of come at a cost in that the code doesn't quite run as efficiently on the board as it does with the micro, with um, the Arduino. But this isn't a massive problem as a lot of the boards for the Arduino are quite dated now, and micro Python boards tend to be a lot more powerful. Um, we'll have a look at the hardware in a minute and we'll see how the micro Python, uh, the micro bit is actually a lot more powerful than the Arduino, kind of when we look at the details. Um, and you can also, most uh, micro Python boards, if you want that power back, you can actually program them in C as well. So now we're going to have a look at the hardware. Um, so first we'll look at the micro bit and then we'll compare it to the Arduino. So we have these two buttons and this um, LED grid on the front that we can use as a display. The edge connector makes connecting um, any extra electronics to it very easy. And you can also use these smaller tabs and uh, some different slot connectors to actually expand that. So you get up to 16 different outputs with this. Um, so to compare it to the Arduino, we kind of have to consider sort of what's happening on the chip rather than on the actual board. So on the micro bit, we have this tiny little chip here. On the Arduino, we have this great big thing here. The micro bit is actually a kind of much more powerful processor. Um, they both have the same clock speed, but there's a lot of extra features on the um, micro bit that make it more powerful. So it has a bigger word size, which means it can do more in each operation, which will actually result in a lot quicker execution. Um, it has more memory, so it can do a lot more at the same time. Um, and a bunch of extra stuff kind of built into the board, which is really cool. So you have sensors for detecting acceleration, for detecting magnetic fields, so you can detect like magnets or the Earth's magnetic field and you use that as a compass. Um, there's a temperature sensor on the chip that detects the CPU temperature, but because the board's so small, that tends to be pretty close to the room temperature. And there is a way to hack it together to actually use the LED grid on the front as a light sensor. You can have a look in the tutorial. Um, we've got a kind of a listed features of the Arduino versus the micro bit. And it's really worth having a look kind of how these boards differ. You're probably wondering what can I do with MicroPython and the micro bit? 
and really the answers are kind of limitless. It's a bit cliche to say, but it's true. Um, these boards are quite powerful and the language itself is very powerful. It's also a great kind of stepping point into even more powerful boards. I hope you um, continue to watch these videos. In the next one, we're gonna look at how to set up our environment and get things ready for actually programming the MicroPython.